academia has truly ruined my life. That is an actual statement from this nature paper and this survey that I found online that gives you a true depiction to the opinions and the thoughts of actual postdocs around the world. I'm going to react to it. The link is in the video description down below where you can follow along and see how bad being a postdoc can actually be and how bad of it can be to your mental health, to your job security, to your life in general. It's happening to me, it's happening to many people around the world and I think it needs to be shared and it needs to be known. So we're going to be going through the survey and sharing my thoughts on the process. Click the link, open it up and you can follow along with me. So the first part of this video is talking about is academia really toxic? And this paper gives some compelling evidence as to why it is for many postdocs around the world. Now, this survey was a survey conducted to get some thoughts of many postdocs from around the world. It was published in 2020, but I just think it's really relevant even now. And I do think it's probably even worse now. I have a feeling there's probably a, a second version of this coming out. I just wanted just to make people aware of this survey and share my initial first impressions of it. Now, it is very common that for many jobs around the world, that there is discrimination, there's harassment, there's biases, understandably. But when you are applying for a job of which the applicant has already been picked, it's just that they have to advertise a job for legal purposes, this doesn't actually coin well for that particular job sector. That's actually what postdocs are around. Many postdocs that people are applying for, within me even going into this paper, the fact that many postdocs are actually for people behind the scenes, but they have to advertise a job for somebody else, it's not great. It's something that really sucks because I'm somebody who is trying to apply for postdocs and I don't know if I'm wasting my time or not. To add to that, there's a lot of gross inequalities, a lot of discrimination, a lot of harassment. If you don't believe me, have a look at the paper, it will tell you. That's something I've just looked over just before this video. And it gives you an idea you're fighting all of these unfair, you know, competitive advantages for other people and you're going against the green just to get a job where you're going to be harassed, bullied, overworked, underpaid, and have no job security. Is that a job you would apply for? Even if you're not a researcher. Just put that into perspective. I told you, you're going to get this job, you have flexible hours or whatever, but you, have, you will get these five things. Not exactly ideal, is it? And this is what this survey actually shows. Now, to give you some more evidence as to why academia is toxic, in my opinion, and why postdocs perhaps have it tougher than other people or other jobs where somebody's gone through a degree and then they're not working compared to somebody who's gone through a degree, got a PhD and now a postdoc. Look at those two avenues, just to start off with, because they may be comparable. And give me an idea if you think this would happen to you. Let's say you have got a degree, if you're watching, and let's say you didn't have a degree if you're not watching. But would you be doing this at the age of 24 to 27, even 30, even onwards, right? Give me an idea. In Brazil, PhD students need to sell food on the street in order to support themselves financially, as most of them are unable to obtain scholarships or jobs to sustain themselves. This is from a bioinformatician in Brazil. Imagine you have a PhD, but you have to sell food on the street just to fund your research. Another idea. Academia has truly ruined my life, just like I said at the start of the video. All of my peers are either married with kids or they are making six figures at their job with only a bachelor's degree. I am still single, no kids, and have depression and extreme anxiety. Biomedical researcher, United States. In the United States, people are feeling like this, and around the world, even in the UK, me included. I'm technically in that, in that boat in the, in the nation. Many people are going through that around the world, in the UK, in the US, in Europe. Postdocs are feeling like this because, and if you want to know the short five seconds of this video, is postdocs have to work way more hours than they're paid. They have to endure so much more stress than they're paid and than they're respected. They're then bullied by their supervisors and peers around the world. So I'll be honest, the, the actual paper shows it. If you get people's thoughts through social media, they will tell you privately. This is the case. If I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now in a YouTube video openly, I've had to face it. And it's not fair, it's not nice, and it's unpleasant. Because you tell me many jobs where you don't get any um, overtime pay. You don't get any extra holidays. You don't get any, you know, funding for promotions or high going up the ranks. You don't get any job security for 10 years, three years, and then you have to go find another job. Tell me many jobs who have that particular paradigm. Not many. 
So now you can understand why post docs are actually are very tough to go through, sustain, and then keep going. Because it's nearly impossible. Because people are facing it like that. Right, I just want to share another bit to give you a kind of hit home, hit the nail on the head, as to this notion of lots of hours, small pay. I'm very unhappy about the lack of support from my supervisor and the constant pressure to work. Ridiculously long hours for a small salary. I'm heavily involved in our local postdoc association to try and change the conditions for future postdocs. Biomedical researcher from Canada. It is not fair to work for free. Many postdocs actually work their hours and then they actually do double. So you're kind of working a whole job for free. Would you would you do that? Hmm? If you're a pharmacist, if you're a doctor, if you're an accountant, if you're you know, if you're a painter, if you're this, if you're that or whatever, would you do work for free? Would you be bullied working long hours on the weekends? Right? Now you think this might not be a problem. But imagine you have a family. Imagine you have a partner, you have family, you have kids. If you're a postdoc, you're working all the time. How are you going to have time to spend with your kids? And if you've got a small salary, how are you going to fund your family? Now, do you start to see why this is actually a genuine massive problem in academia? And that's why many people are leaving academia for a better life. I don't blame them. I'm sometimes even considering myself because why am I trying to work so hard to get to something where I'm not being respected enough by financially, so not getting paid enough? Maybe not going to be respected by promotion because there isn't any. So it becomes quite difficult to justify. Right? I'm not saying all postdocs are like this, definitely not. But too many are like this that it produced a paper like this. It's not great, is it? However, although I agree academia is toxic, although I agree with this paper and agree with many of the points, I do think there's other a balanced argument that needs to be addressed, which is the notion of it is not life death. What do you mean by life and death? There are many other clinical roles where if you make a mistake, it could end somebody's life. It could end their life financially, physically, medically. So if you're a doctor and you do something wrong, you could kill a patient. If you're a pharmacist and you do something wrong, you could kill a patient. If you are an accountant and you do something wrong, you can lose somebody's thousands and millions of dollars in, in, in business. There's many jobs. If you're a taxi driver and you make a mistake, you can crash. Whatever it is, you can actually make a mistake. That could end somebody's life or severely cost somebody's life. With postdocs, for many of us, if you 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 know ruin an experiment, it might cost a lot of money, but you're not super endangering many people. There are many people who are clinical postdocs who might work with patients, but the fact that it's not a good thing, but a lot of the bad stuff is to do with the person. If they make a mistake, it really affects them and maybe affects the research group a little bit. But imagine if you make a mistake in the hospital or, or in the surgery, you could affect somebody else. So there are jobs where it can be a lot harder. But there aren't many jobs where you're working this much for that little pay. Now, one of the, I know many people who are medics, who are actual medical doctors, and they have to work crazy hours. But it's not where they have to work crazy hours every single day. And they're all compensated. And junior doctors don't get much pay. I respect that. I understand that. That once they finish their degree and they are actually being a doctor, a medical doctor in surgery, in hospital, they don't get that much pay. But you don't see them working 12, 14 hours every single day, every single day, without any overtime, without any conversation. Because they're doing that for a progression, right? In order to become, you know, a core doctor or specialist, etc. With a postdoc, it's three years and then you're not guaranteed to get anything else. You know, so although I respect and I agree that a lot of similarities between medical doctor training and kind of postdoc training, but the salary for what you're getting as as a medic, it's not great. The salary that you're also what you're getting as a PhD person, to person who's post PhD doing a postdoc, is also not ideal. But that's why I'm trying to say that it is toxic. Academia is toxic. You get bullied left, right, and center. But it's not life and death, like those professions have. Uh, said do you think it's going to happen in the future i do think a lot of people will leave academia because there are now more options than there ever were before so like being a content creator you know sharing advice and sharing funny content or good content educational content it's becoming a genuine real life full-time role that many people that i know have going into that kind of the creative writing going into being a school teacher going into being going to into industry into small startup companies 
going in to be a consultant in the field. There's a lot of avenues, genuine avenues, which have a better quality of life than a post on does. So I genuinely urge myself and many of you just to consider it. I I would love to be a lecturer. It's a very prestigious thing, and the postdoc is a really good way to get to that. But when I hear stories like this, and when I hear stories that I know even off camera and off this, it's not exactly pleasant, is it? And I really do urge you to comment down in the comment section below if you're facing something like this, if you know people are, because I want to generate more awareness about the poor mental health postdocs go through, me included, and many others, unfortunately. I want to share a lot through my Instagram page, amir.phd, you can see over here, TikTok, amir.phd, and even now on Twitter, to raise the conversation that it needs a lot more support or needed for postdocs, especially financially, to try and get ahead, just so they can have a life with a family. You know, It's not the amount of hours for the amount of pay, it's not worth it. It really isn't. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a bit of a different one. I'm trying to share more kind of React videos. Um, hopefully I'll do more React videos, videos. So let me know if that is something you are interested in. Sorry, I haven't been too well recently, but I didn't want to lose, you know, I wanted to share content, hopefully that you guys find valuable. So sorry if I'm a bit kind of like Darth Vader voice, but hopefully you found it still useful. In any case, I should hopefully see you next one. Have a good rest of the week. I should hopefully see you soon. Take care.